So I have definitely changed my mind about putting a piece of canvas over the inner cover hole uh, in this uh, situated situation here, um, mainly because I can't see what's going on. Um, if the bees are, are coming above the top bars or whatever they're doing, I can't see it. Whereas if, say in this hive, where I have a hive pillow instead, I've got the hole, it's screened over, and I can see if those bees are eating that sugar or whatever, and they're not eating that sugar yet. I can, I can, I can, you know, I can see what the bees are up to, and it just takes two seconds like that. Here's another situation where I've got a hive pillow. I just flip the hive pillow up, take a peek. I can see those bees are eating some of that comb honey I put in there, so they're good. And I put the top back on, and I'm done. But over here, it just doesn't work. It just I have to take everything apart and then pick that apart to see what's going on. It's just, this is not, I didn't think that part through all the way and I really, I'm definitely not doing that. This is just totally inconvenient. But um, I think the idea might still work. I mean, it's this thick fabric, it's canvas, but I could probably use denim or something too, like an old pair of jeans or something. Something thick that's still porous but holds the, holds heat in enough so that it still does the job. The, 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 the moisture comes out but the heat stays in. Um, but instead of tacking it down, I will just keep the screen over that hole and put the piece of uh, fabric right here over this hole and just weigh it down with rocks or whatever, something like that, right? So it'll still do what it does. It's still, it'll still hold in the heat, but it won't, uh, it'll be easy just to flip it up and look inside, but that's not working. I'm changing that as soon as I can. And the reason that I went with the piece of canvas over the inner cover hole was so that I didn't have to build uh, hive pillows or use moisture quilts or quilt boxes or any of that. I just wanted to just to go simple but um, and maybe it'll still work but I think I'm just going to end up making a couple more hive pillows and just plopping the hive pillows over the hole because yeah it's a little, little extra little extra work but once they once you got them they'll last forever I assume and look how easy it is just to check and see what's going on right so that's probably what I'm going to do. So I took some uh, some deep plastic foundation and I just tilted it up in front of the hive pinned it to the to the bottom above the bottom entrance and now it's a little shelter I probably should have put a little hole right here so that any bees coming back can find their way back into the hive but I'll do that later we'll see what happens I used um, some leftover plastic and a plastic wrap bubble wrap or the foil bubble wrap to do this but uh, anything should work, right? You, you can do, I mean, just, it just basically you're just creating a little tent, right? So it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's just, you know, keeps the wind out. This piece of uh, foundation, I had to cut it to fit the inner cover, or the bottom board, I mean. Um, so I had to trim, trim the edge of it. I've got tons of this stuff, so no big deal. But I could have used, um, you know, like, again, anything. I think I could have used... Um, uh, corrugated plastic from political signs, that left over from political signs and that sort of thing. Anything, I, sp I suppose, sturdy that can get pinned to the front of the hive. And uh, I just thought of that because I see people using like, you know, plywood and all kinds of other things like that that are perhaps a bit more expensive and hard to come by for beekeepers on a budget. So if you got anything banging around, I think that, that should do the job too. And it's... I guess it looks kind of silly, but I can see totally how this would work, right? It keeps the snow out of the bottom of the hives, you know, keeps the, the, the entrance clear, clear of snow, and provides ventilation, and yet the strong winds are not going to be blowing right up into the hive, right? So, um, yeah, that's okay. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe? Good idea? You never know. Okay, so I'm inside my messy garage, and I've got another roll of this stuff, uh, whatever it's called, Reflexix or whatever. It's foil bubble wrap. It's a big one. There it is. I did a measurement of the hives. I've got um, a couple of hives that are three mediums. I measured them, and they're, I think to wrap it completely, I think I need 74 inches and 20 inches high. 
And so I'm probably going to go like 76 inches just to get a little bit of overlap. But if, I don't even know if I need the overlap, but I'll go say 75 inches. And 75 by 20, and I'm going to cut it, I'm going to cut it with this, a knife. So let's see what happens. All right, so I cut it. I went with uh, 24 inches, or two feet, instead of 20 centimeters, or 20 inches, because this stuff is uh, four feet wide anyway, so might as well just cut it down the middle. So that's what I did. So it's about 75 inches. I hope I measured that right. And by 24 inches. And I'm going to go wrap it around at least one of my hives and see what happens. Well, that didn't work out exactly as I planned. The hole was right here and I thought it was down there. So I cut a big strip down the middle of the thing. So that's kind of a bit of a mess. But anyway, I got the hole covered up. It's funny, like if you have a second person to help you out with this, so you can level it and make it straight, it works out. But I started by pinning it we're tacking it to the front, and I thought it was flat and straight, but then when it spins around, it starts tilting up to the point where it's like, it's looking like that. They don't, they didn't, and like this, right? So it didn't exactly match up, but uh, it's raining and I didn't want to fart around with it. I didn't feel like getting any wetter than I already am. So that's what it is, and you know what? It still works, so let's see what happens. I wrapped this one because it's one of the weaker colonies that I have in this yard actually there's a few of them here that are pretty weak um, this one up here is strong and this one's strong so I'm not too worried about them so I'm gonna just give this one these ones a little bit of extra heat um, they, I don't think there's as many bees inside there same with this one too that one it's got a small cluster so I'm gonna give them the wrap and maybe see if it supposedly does what it's supposed to do which is uh, reflect 97% of the radiant heat back into the hive I don't know about that but we're gonna find out and hopefully uh, the next time I check on them, uh, I'll pop the top off, take a quick look, and we'll see. If they're warmer inside, then they won't be clustering like they uh, normally would be on a cold day. They'll be warm. So uh, we'll see what happens. But right now, and I'll come back later and uh, tape up that, that gap I got in the middle of it there. But otherwise, you know, it's tacked on good enough, and uh, I think it'll do the job. Okay, so I wrapped up uh, two more hives today. Uh, this one, and this one over here. This one is wrapped, and then one over there is wrapped. And these two are not wrapped. They're the ones that are still, the bees are clustering way down below. Uh, they're well below, they're about the top bars, so I can't even see them. So they're doing good. I don't think they need a wrap right now. But I might wrap them uh, earlier, later on in the spring, uh, just to see if it helps them uh, you know bright cluster a bit so let, let the brood nest expand a bit more and maybe the queen will lay more and stuff like that so we'll see this is my weakest colony for sure and uh it always was uh, i just got a queen out of her that's just not a good laying queen never was and my plan was to just get it through the spring and then probably combine it with a stronger colony but let's see i will put on this wrap see if it helps maybe they'll get a warm up the inside of that hive and uh, expand the brood nest a bit. I was going to dump some of these pollen patties on them today, but it's just way too cold to crack open the hive, so I'm just not going to do that. It's like 15 degrees below zero. So that's not going to happen. But uh, anyway, and I wrapped up this one too. And for some reason I got this one on, these ones on straight, as opposed to this one that I did yesterday, which is, yeah, you can't see it, but that, it's a bit crooked, but anyway, I guess it does the job. I'm going to get some regular bubble wrap, just clear bubble wrap, and, and tape over that hole. Because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't remember where the hole was on the side of the hive. Uh, the auger hole, the entrance hole, so I kind of screwed it up. And I did it a little bit with that one too, so I'll fix that later. But uh, anyway, it's freezing, and I'm assuming the bees are all nice and tucked in. And this one up here... That's the, uh, right there on the bottom of that hive, below the red tape, is, um, that's just a piece of foundation, a deep foundation that I tilted up against over the, uh, the bottom entrance and created a little tent, a little shelter for them. And I think, uh, I'm gonna, it's just such a simple little thing to do, but I think that's going to work. Um, because they still got full ventilation down there, but it'll prevent the snow from clogging up the hive. Because you can see, hold on, let's just give it a go here. Let's see if I can do this or crack my neck. So you can see there's no... No snow build up in there, and there's the, the quarter inch six millimeter mesh to keep the shrews out. So that's full ventilation, but uh, no wind blowing into the hive and up, up into the bees and freezing them to death. And uh, 
And it's really simple. It didn't cost me anything. So I can probably do that with a piece of corrugated plastic or, you know, like a political sign or almost anything, really. So, and you can see here, these guys, see, their bottoms are all filling up with snow. That one sort of is a bit. This one is a bit. That one, that one definitely is. And if I had a little shelter on there, this, that stuff there, like, like you can see, this is all, that's all clogged up with snow. Not a big deal, because just the heat from the cluster should melt most of it. I think I'm just going to stick with this uh, entrance shelter idea for all my hives, because it doesn't really cost anything. It's easy to do, and I can't see how it could hurt anything. How's that going to bother the bees? It won't. So, yeah, um, it's funny. I, I, it took 11 years to figure that one out, but it's simple, and I think it'll, it, it should be effective. So, why not? I, I can't imagine, like, commercial beekeepers doing things like this, but for small-scale or backyard beekeepers like me, why not?